Studneck Aquatics here. I just got done doing water changes in my fish room, so I thought I would do a quick tour. I'll try not to take too long on this thing. Um, this is my first rack that has 320 longs in it. And this has my, um, there's an Alpha Lamprologus calvus in there, which is right there. And I also have some Daffodil Bricardis. And they're starting to get some really neat finish yet. They need to grow a lot. They grow slow, but they're doing very, very well. The next tank down here are the Julitochromus Regani. And I, I don't have young yet. I, I don't have fry yet, but I have a number of different sizes. And I added some more rock work, and I might add some more. So it's doing quite well. They work very well in the 20 long. I highly recommend them. And this tank here, I started doing this a little different because of my son. And I just got done filling it up. I let it evaporate down until it hits 50%. And I have not got snails yet. I'm hoping I have two two of the large snails in there, the um, apple snails, I guess they call them. And I don't have them yet, but I'm, I let it evaporate down and then fill it. And the plant has just absolutely exploded since I did that. That Anubius has. Other than that, there's some um, rosy minnows. There's, there's supposed to be some scarlet jambatus in there, but I, for the life of me, I can't find them. I don't know where they went. They were so tiny if they just had didn't make it or what. So um, the other thing I have here is this rack. I have 240 breeders on it. And the top one is my Julitochromus transcriptus colony. And as you can see, I have quite a few of them in there. I'm on my, I think, fourth or fifth generation of those. And they're doing very, very well. These are the youngest one. Now there's there's one of the smallest ones right there in the front. I can find him right there. So anywhere they're doing very very well. I do have some Placostomus bristlenose mixed in in different places in this thing. Get this thing to focus. And I have one little multi in there too. So get it to focus in. So anyway, that's what that tank is. This one here is a 37 tall. And I had a gold angel in there. It had a growth on its lip. It could not eat. I tried medicating it. I tried everything. Eventually it did pass. So I went ahead and cleaned this up and started over basically. And I had a black angel that I could add in there. So I just did that today after my water change. And I have some Anubias nanas in there, some red cryptocorns and such. So hopefully that, I'm gonna to try to feed it quite a bit and get that black angel to get nice and big. This rack here has my 75 gallon on top, which I have my gold severum in there, which is getting which is getting large. I have a large hand and that fish is just big. And then I have two of the red psalms. And there's been a lot of um, comments back and forth about whether they're a red terror, whether they're, I mean, whether they're a green terror or whether they're a red psalm. Uh, one guy said, well, it's the same fish. They're just do that to sell more. Either way, from what I've gathered by looking at them, I believe that is a red psalm. So either way, they're doing very, very well. I do a 50% water change on this tank every week, and I siphon the gravel every week because I bubble filter everything in this tank. And then I also have a hang-on filter in this one, too. Um, this tank down here, everybody's a little shy since I just got done cleaning, but this is another Tanganyikan tank. And one of the Pocostomus is right there. If I could find them, there is a, it's one of the uh, compressiceps, Altolamprologus compressiceps. And there is also a number of Altolamprologus physiotis in there. And like I said, I just got doing them water changes. It's probably not the best time to, to do a update. So anyway, this tank up here is doing wonderful. This is my African Mbuna tank. And all the little ones you see in here, that are adult size were all born in this tank. All those are fry. I'm constantly getting more. And the female right there, she is ready to spawn any day. And so what happens in a tank like this, there's so much aggression in this thing that there's always one fish on the bottom of the totem pole and eventually it dies. And I've lost three or five, I lose about one every two months. So what I need to do is I need to get about Oh, six fish of adult size, pretty decent size, and dump them in all at one time. If you dump one fish in, they'll kill it. If you bunch, dump in two, they'll probably kill them. But if you dump in five or six, there's so much going on, they can't help it. And as you see, she is keeping everybody out of that end of the tank. She just doesn't allow it. So everybody else has to live on this end, but it's doing very well. Um, this is my catch-all tank. This is another 55. That's what that one was up there. 
And one of the really neat things is I took some flower pots and I put potting soil in them, put a little bit of rock and I planted some really small uh, cryptocorns in there, red, and they've just really gotten big. They've, it's kind of neat. I mean, they're really grown. This is my catch-all tank. I have gold angel, I have koi angels, um, I have a little fire mouse cichlid fry that I raised. I have some giant Danios. There's some mollies. It's just kind of a where, you know, if you don't have any other place to put it, that's where I put it. And as you move across here, this rack here, it has, this is a 40 breeder, which is my planted community tank. And it's doing very well. The plants are doing wonderful. Um, I really enjoy it. It's, it's a real simple tank. There is, oh, three, two bristle nose and a normal Plecostomus in there also. This tank down here is a 40 breeder. And these are my sunshine peacocks. And these are all fry that I raised. And I'm losing my focus there for a little bit. Let's get focused back in. Focus on something. There we go. Anyway, they have a tendency to hide whenever I put a camera in front of them. They're very shy. I need to add a little more rock work and put more fish in there. But I do have one dominant male, a subordinate male, and three females. And he's really showing some color. So I'm hoping any day that they will actually... Oh, they already did. I have a fry. Right down there. Huh. That is the first I have seen of that. Well, that's cool. I have sunshine peacock fry. Okay. This is working well. This is cool. I like that. Hopefully there will be more. I need to add more rock work so they have more places to hide is what I need to do. That's pretty cool. And that, that made my whole day. Um, this side over here, this is a 29 gallon tank. And there's always a lot of reflection on this. Maybe I can block it. But this is my um, South American biotope tank. It's doing very, very well. This angel is just growing really, really fast. It must have something to do with actual biotope conditions because it's getting fed the same as everybody else and it's just, it's doubled in size in a short amount of time. I have a couple of bristlenose Pocostomus in there, uh, rummy nose Tetra, and the little bronze Cory Cat. And one thing I do do, I have a back, hang on the back filter on there full of Sarah Peat pellets and I add almond leaves. It takes about a month to six weeks for them to decay down to the point where these are, where they're about gone. And you don't take them out, you leave them in there, and then you just add more. So I did a water change on this. This gets RODI water. Everything else in here so far you've seen gets tap water that is dechlorinated, but this gets RODI. And I also keep this a little bit warmer than the others. Uh, everything else is 76 to 78, and this runs about 80 to 82, something like that. So anyway, I really enjoy this tank, and the key is to dumping almond leaves in there about once a month. This tank down here is another 29 gallon, and this is my pair of Firemouth cichlids. They have fry all the time. As a matter of fact, they think they got a bunch of fry in there now. So anyway, they have fry continuously, and sometimes I save them, usually I don't, maybe that's wrong, but I don't have a place to put them, and I don't want to break up the pair, I really enjoy them. So anyway, that is what that is. This setup here is one that I did recently. And this is my guppy rearing system that I set up here, I guess. Um, the top two tanks, they really don't amount to anything because they, I lost them in shipping. So all I have in here is one blonde tuxedo guppy female. And I threw a beta in there with the beta log that I um, won from Aquatics and Furries. And then over here, I have a red cobra guppy. If I could ever get my hands on some females, I'd do that. But I don't have any. Um, and I don't have any pet stores within 200 and 50 miles of me. Um, these are the green cobra guppies. I have two pair and they're continuously having fry, which you can see there's more in there. And then these are their fry. Also this tank has a piece of glass in the middle of it. It's a 10 gallon split. And so there's another bunch of fry in the back. And when you get down here, these are my neon blue tuxedo guppies. And they are just a beautiful guppy. I really like them. There's two pair. They have fry, and I just got done moving them. Both sides of this have fry in it. I let the algae grow on the sides so that the fry have something to eat. I just got done taking some blue tuxedo guppy fry upstairs and put it in my planted community tank in my bedroom. And the last tank I have in here, I gotta back up for this one, is my 150 tall. This is a really neat aquarium. It is four foot long, 
It is two foot front to back and 31 inches tall and it's 150 gallons. And this is eventually going to be for my discus. I have um, a number of different fish in there, not a lot, but I do have some, um, I have some neon tetras. There's two Rio Negro plecos in there I haven't seen for two months. Um, I also have some pandacories, some silver tip tetras and black mollies. And the interesting thing is the silver tip tetras, they hang at the top all the time. The, <coughs> the mollies go everywhere, top to bottom and have fry continuously. And the neons stay in the lower area. So when I get discus in there, it's going to be great. I also do inject CO2 into this one, which is working very, very well. Um, and the plants are, plants are doing good. Um, yeah, it's just a really, really tall tank, so it's hard to get them to the top. I had some floating plants in here, but they started to come apart. It didn't look good anymore, so I got rid of them. So anyway, that is my 150 tall, and when I get discus in there, it's going to be very impressive. I do a about a 25% water change on this every week. I use RODI water in this container over here that is seasoned for about a month before I do it, well, at least a week before each time. And so that's what I'm planning on continuing to do. I have Biomedia. Um, I'm running a reaction for JBJ canister filter, and I am currently running bio rings in this filter here with these big fish. So when it is time to get the discus, all I have to do is take the bio rings out of here. I don't need the bio rings in here because I have a sponge in there, plus I have a sponge filter. It has a two sponge filters, all the bacteria it needs. So that way I can, I can quick start this tank here when I get my discus. So anyway, that is my tour of my little fish room. It's not very big, but I do enjoy it. And I'd like to get a few more fish. I'm gonna be going um, to a town with a fish store. It's about a two and a half hour drive and I'm hoping next month sometime I can slip in. So I might pick up some more fish to add to some of these tanks. I'd like to add some down there to that one, and so on and so forth. So anyway, this is Studnik Aquatics, and get this thing to focus. Focus. Focus, you dummy. This is Studnik Aquatics and thanks for watching.